met a gypsy. One thing I was curious of, when did you actually make the call like I'm done? Have you spoke about this before? Oh, I don't think so. Um, when did I make the call? I mean, I think I knew in the off season, I really knew in 2023. I always say this. I say when I, w I tore my ACL, or no, let's just take it back to the beginning. I'll run it through real quick. So struggling with the arm stuff starting in 2020, it just... R so it was that long. 2019, really. September 2019. As soon as I got on a 450 after outdoors, I don't know what happened, but didn't crash or anything. I just woke up one day, went to the track, couldn't hold on. Just, it was always managing that. From September 2019, it was just managing that all the way through. I never rode a... Like the first, if you remember so dang long ago now, but my rookie season on 450s, there's a few races. There's a few races like San Diego, almost one I got second to Coop. He passed me like three laps to go. Oakland, I was running up front, fade at the end. Everybody thought I was getting tired. I was in the best shape of my life. I mean, I was not getting tired. I could have done 30 laps and I, I just could not hold on to the motorcycle. And it was just in one hand? Um, yeah, just my right hand, like Tampa I was leading Tomac past me, I crashed in the whoops, like five minutes ago, easy second place. Can't hold on to the bike. Like so many times that happened. So many times that happened. Um, but t 2021 comes around. I think I won like high point, did half of outdoors, but then I got my ulnar nerve transposed and then they, they basically shaved this bone, like my ulna bone or something they said was too long, messing up the cartilage in my wrist, which ended up making it worse, actually. Uh. Yeah, but I'm 2021 off season going into 22 Supercross. I am going faster than I ever have in my life. Made 2020 me look slow. I was ripping. Like, fit, solid, technique, better than ever. Mind, mind was the biggest thing. Like, mentally so far ahead of where I was my rookie year on a 450. Like felt like I knew how to win races. Like just, I yeah, got it. Yeah. Like we're in 2020, yeah. you're still just going out there and just kind of going as fast as you can. Hoping you can win and not knowing you can win. Right. Yeah. In, in 2021 off season, I was like, I'm ready. Like I'm, I'm ready to go two weeks before the first race. I'm going through the whoops, doing a 20 managing it. Like I always am ripping through the whoops. That's one thing that I worked on a ton ripping through the whoops i didn't even used to go through the whoops with my finger on the clutch like Stu. like it was no clutch and so i got my finger on the clutch everything was a little bit more stable go through fourth gear fast hand slides off bad hand slides off and just i mean a monumental crash i mean i flew 40 feet in the air it was insane so that's why i did my i did my uh ac separation in my shoulder mm. and i could if you remember that A1, there's this big set of whoops after the finish line. I was like doubling through them. But I I was in third for like half the race. And I could not lift my shoulder above. I ended up getting like 10th or something. And then I went to Oakland, kind of did the same thing. Still was like pretty fast even with that. Uh, I didn't really want to ride, but kind of had to. And San Diego, big set of whoops. Just a weird deal. I kind of got out of control. I had no, I had zero strength on my left side. I got a little out of control and I didn't even crash. I just kind of hit the last whoop and yeah, tore my, tore my yeah, ACL there. Yeah, and so yeah, that, yeah. that whole year, that was like the lowest low of my whole life. 2022 was the hardest year ever. Like it was just a total, like a, a culmination of all the frustrations I've ever felt in my life all wrapped into one. Cause I'm like what I did in 2021 to come back from what I did, all the rehab, everything and to get to that place where it feels like everything has come together and that to happen, I was just like, I'm done. Like I'm over this man. Like what in the hell is good? Talk about feeling like stuff's not fair. Gnarly. So right then it, it kind of like it started a kind of a journey for me right there where I was like, I knew it wasn't really going to get any better. But Cowie, K Cowie, I was honest with Cowie about where I was at. I was like, this is, you know, this is what we're working with. There was always things in place to try to get it better. Like, oh, there's this surgery or I never, never stopped trying stem cells, never stopped trying to 
to get it better acupuncture everything i have people message me every single day mm. saying i'll oh, do this do this because that's a thing too when you're in that position you even, just start looking to anything dude even that ayahuasca thing that i did 50 percent of that was because people have like healed their cancer doing that stuff before oh, so it was even just to try and yes get, uh, i was willing to do anything to to fix this thing i was like here it is everything's right in front of me right now and you only get so many chances yeah you're not going to get another one and i came back for 2022 that was the that was the year that tomac and chase went at it in outdoors and i think right then and there the level of the sport it just shifted it a shifted bit it shifted yeah. and then it yeah. was a young generation it was chase and i was kind of left behind that was just kind of how it just how it went i still did everything i could in the off season leading but that's up, also leading just to 2023. how sport goes yeah, There's it is. Just it's so much it of it gets, is timing. Yep. It's timing and making, you know, you're on the right equipment. And then in 23, we were struggling with the bike. Wasn't, wasn't the same as like the 20, 2020, 2021 bike. It just didn't feel as comfortable. I didn't have the same strength that I did before kind of my shoulders started to deteriorate a little bit too. And that was already something like just dealing with how my shoulders are is kind of um, difficult. Not that I couldn't get it done with it, but it was difficult. And then I came back in 23 and like the off season training, it's just not consistent. Like I can't go out there. I don't know on Tuesday if I'm going to be able to go out there and get two twenties in. Like I might have to do one twenty and then do one twenty going around the whoops or, Oh, I just have to work a section yeah. or I have to do five laps at a time or, or so dealing with that frustration every single day has made me who I am now because every day for five years, it's like, what am I going to get? What am I going to get today? I'm still giving everything. I'm still sacrificing my entire life. It's still number one priority. I'm still training like I want to be a champion. I'm not like, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a five to ten guy now. Like, let's just kind of yeah. chill and take it easy. No. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was all in. And people, you know, because of my happy-go-lucky demeanor, right? Like we, like I explained, people think, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't care. Like, you're just taking up a seat. Give it. No. I, I gave everything. Like, I gave every ounce of me to try to get back. Like there's not one regret I have. I mean, there was nights I would days. I would go to the track, go to the gym. I'd keep it together for long enough. And I would come home and I would just lose my mind, like clearing shit off my kitchen table, like punching walls and stuff. And that ain't me. Like I was, I gave everything. It broke me. Like it broke me. And so 23, when I came back, I think I came back after not racing for a year. I think at A1, I got like ninth. It's pretty mm. decent, right? But I knew, I kind of knew then, I, I kept I kept trying, but I knew then that I missed the, missed the window. Like yeah. there wasn't, there's too much time off the bike. These guys have gotten, it wasn't necessarily, I've always been able to get back like early in my career. I didn't race, I raced 14 Supercross, almost won that title and then didn't race Supercross in 15 or 16 and like key developmental years. And I almost won the championship in 17. Yeah. Like I, I could always come back, but my work was affected so much. I couldn't work the way that I, I had to, it was so modified. Yeah. And it was, there was so much frustration, like even right now getting it, like I, I'm like, I could flip this table over. Um, well, you're probably too weak in your shoulders, but I know, <laughs> yeah, I know what you're up, saying. Straight <laughs> up, get arm pump. Um, <laughs> but 23, I kind of started to see the writing on the wall of like, okay, you can you could probably ride this out for a while you'd probably be like a five to ten guy for a while but i had some good results like i had that podium i mean most of the guys yeah. were hurt but i had that podium yeah. at denver and then i had a podium at high point i like ran kenny down for a second like there was a burst of speed there where every once in a while there was a day during practice this thing is weird sometimes it would be it would be better and i would go and that that was the hardest thing is uh, that there be days would be good i remember going on a tuesday I forget it was during the 23 outdoor season and and i was just ripping and i'm like dude i can win this weekend like it's going to a track colorado or something where i was good and i'm like i can i can win this weekend i showed up i could barely even ride so you you live that cycle enough times and make anybody and make the most optimistic dude cynical right yeah and you're alone too like living alone living through alone. all this yeah which would have been gnarly yeah i was doing long distance like with my girlfriend at the time she was yeah. like in australia yeah or something but I'm glad I went through it alone because I didn't have anything to fall back on. Yeah. You know, I wasn't coming home and, you know, crying in my mom's lap. Like I was, I had to deal with it all myself. Um, 
of course I had, you know, Nick, I had people around me that were trying to help me. But during, during times like that, for me, I would isolate myself from everybody. I'd stop calling my mom back. Like I stopped calling my friends back. I, I just, I never wanted to show, I understand that I live a, live a good life, a privileged life. I never wanted to make it somebody else's problem. And I mm. probably should have, should have let the people that wanted to be there for me, be there for me. And I didn't. Um, so I guess I regret that a little bit, I put myself in a harder spot. Um, but yeah, tw like 2023 at the end, I knew Chicago, I got like 15th. I could barely ride a Chicago SMX race. Kind of starting to have the thoughts. You don't want to admit it, but like, okay, there's not really a lot of options left. I went and did stem cells that, that year. I did them again in the off season, but it just wasn't feeling like I can, I can feel it. Like even when I'm sitting here right now, I, it's just, just different. Like it just feels different. The sensations are different. So as soon as I, I did everything I could in the off season, it's kind of more of the same. And I showed up at A1 and I rode practice. And the track just gets, you forget every year, every off season. But the track just gets so rough compared to test track. Yeah. It's Even if you day. let the test tracks go. It's just a different It's deal. just different. Yeah. There's, you know, a hundred riders on the track. It's, it's always going to be different. And, you know, I just couldn't. In that main event, I got, I just got lapped. I think I got 12th. And to make things worse... Prado comes in in the last turn for 12th at A1, breaks my hand, my left hand, my good hand, the hand that I have arthritis in because I've been trying to hold on with it for five years. Uh, like my knuckles are all swollen and stuff. You see. Oh, dude. Yeah, gnarly. Fuck. Um, I know. This and sucks. so I, then I wrote the, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. It's like a sob story, dude. Sorry, and I off. hate, no, no, no. And I hate that. <laughs> no, I, I hate when people are like, oh, it feels so bad. For, like, no, but it I, does. It's no, like, I know. I know. It sucks. But yeah, it was the, then, so I raced the whole year. It still hurts when I golf. Like it still hurts. I, I had to race the whole year with a broken hand. Like I unfollowed Prado on Instagram. Petty. I, I just couldn't, <laughs> I was like, dude, really? Like, really? This for is, 12. this is what I need right now. You know, this is like you're gonna break my only good hand come <laughs> over here break that's what i always say now i say come over here bro broke my hand and took my ride <laughs> um now but i mean water off a duck's bum now I, it's, it is what it is it's fine um he's just doing his best but but yeah i mean right after a1 i'm like no i'm not gonna do this i'm not gonna keep doing this to myself it's not worth it i could get a ride on hep and you know make 400 grand a year with gear and everything and be a 10 to 15 guy. I'm not going to risk my life for that. Like this, I've gave everything like mentally, physically, I'm drained. I'm exhausted. I've given everything that I possibly can to this sport. It's time to do something else. So after I tried to ride a two, but it was so rough with my hand that I, I took a few races off. Yeah. And right then I had a, I had a meeting with Dan Fahey, which is like the, um, you know, team manager for Kawasaki. And he's like, these guys are, are worried. Like the Cowie really, they saw how much of a toll it took on me. And they're like, dude, maybe you should just call it. Like maybe, maybe it's just time. Like, and that's the conversation that Dan and I had at, at a two. It's like, dude, you've done everything you can. You got nothing left to prove to us. Like we know that you care. And I just didn't want to go out like that defeated down, like that A2 day was really hard, but that was the day that I was like, okay, this is it. Like yeah. The most I, I, I thought about for the, for a while, for those few weeks, I thought about, cause I was going to come back for Daytona. I thought about, okay, maybe I just race Daytona and that's the last one home race. And, and that was kind of the plan for a while. And then the week before Daytona, I'm like, oh, I think I can maybe make it through the year. And so, yeah, I decided kind of the week before Daytona that, that we're just going to finish out supercross yeah. and that was it and so right then and there as soon as i made that decision it was like the weight of the world got lifted off my shoulders and i'm like but with that with that came i was always really good on the no matter what my health was like on the first lap like getting the my start technique was never anything special but i just knew i was going to get the start like it's start is so mental I could always get a good start. And even if I didn't come in the first turn, good, like the first few sections, yeah. I could go from 15th to third in the first few sections. That was always like a strong point of mine. And as soon as I made the decision that I was done, I lost all that. I was like, I'm not hitting a triple next to love you, a Ray, but I'm not, hitting, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to hit a triple. Like if I'm not sure, you know, a Ray's going for it. Somebody's side, it's just not worth it to me. Yeah. And so, yeah, I kind of just made a decision that I'm going to, I'm not going to remember the sport. I'm not going to go out 
this frustrated, like defeated, anxious, yeah. defeated way. Yeah. Right. I gave it everything I have. I can be proud of that. And let's just enjoy the experience. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.